entire tempo of a game. His pace, his game. You take a look at the numbers when he wasn't playing to when he is playing. Combat that with the fact that, or combine that with the fact that how good Auburn is in Auburn Arena. I think Georgia's got to play extremely well tonight. Georgia's coming off of a game against Ole Miss. See, one by ten. They shot the ball well throughout the game. Xavier Wheeler will lead the way for the Dogs, leading the league better than seven assists per game. Wheeler gets a touch here and through the screen gives it up. And a nice, easy run through for Georgia and for the bucket. You know, the Bulldogs do a great job on the offensive end at spacing the floor. And they can attack and they attack off the dribble. And Bruce Pearl is concerned about his ball club defensively off that dribble. Take a look at the starters for Auburn brought to you by Farm Rich. Cooper joins Johnson, Flanagan, Williams. And the very interesting JT Thor for Bruce Pearl's squad. Coming off of a loss in the Big 12 SEC Challenge on the road against Baylor. Got a point blank look, but couldn't convert for Jalen Williams. Here's a look for Georgia's starters brought to you by Farm Rich. Georgia's got to be wary of what Auburn does inside. They have been a shot blocking machine, especially. In this series, he had 14 blocks in the first matchup. Here's Thor with the turnaround. Yeah, I thought it was interesting what Bruce Pearl said when we said you had 14 blocks the first game. He said, yeah, that, that's a good stat, but the bad stat is that he got beat off the dribble. And Georgia got it to the rim, and we made some defensive plays. But he has a big concern about how good this trio of guards can be from Georgia when K.D. Johnson also comes in the lineup and they go to the three-guard lane. Ty Fagan getting Georgia off to a good start. Dogs have hit two of their first three. High octane game because Georgia loves to push it and score in a hurry. And we know what Auburn does again in this building. They want to get the tempo up, try to score it as fast as they can also. It'll be interesting, uh, the tempo between both of these two. The SEC as a whole is the fastest power conference in the country. Ty Fagan helped improve my point. He's got five of the dogs, seven. Georgia comes in 25th in tempo. Auburn right behind them. They're a team that likes to get up and down the floor. But as you mentioned, Cooper, a guy who can really pull the string and control how fast both teams go almost. Yeah, we've seen him do it many times. Uh, but what his great strength is, uh, is to advance the ball by the pass. Like to hit it ahead and see if his guys can get an easy look. Tom Crean in his third season as the head dog. It's a series that recently has been dominated by Auburn. And Bruce Pearl made sure to make that evident. They've had a couple of sweeps. They're going for another sweep here tonight from the corner. Georgia coming off a confident win against Ole Miss where they played well, especially against a tough team like Ole Miss that they're on the defensive end. But if they do this, if they space it out, make Auburn chase, if the shooters knock it in, that was Kyer who can hit from outside. Uh, this is a tough matchup for Auburn. Auburn easily won the first matchup. So could they be overconfident? Yeah, just a bit. Trying to go to Thor on the back cut. Auburn just one for four to start this game. Well, Georgia's hit on four of its five. Here's Jamal Johnson struggling from deep. Thor on the glass. Both of these teams, sensational offensive rebounding teams. And Thor cleans up and puts it back. And I think a large part of that, Tom, is the fact that they'll shoot threes outside. They'll shoot deep balls, which allows an offensive team a little more of an advantage because there's some more long rebounds. Guys get a better look at it from deep when they're coming attacking the rim. As you mentioned uh, on the missed shot, uh, Jamal Johnson, they really would love to see him get going. No double-figure games in the last five. A guy that was uh, shooting it well earlier this season, a great outside shooter. Contested three, and George is on the glass with Tamani Kamara bringing it down. Here's the push now for the Dogs. They're at their best when they can run. The lefty Wheeler, this is an interesting matchup with Cooper. Unable to finish on the right side. And then an Auburn throw away. First turnover for the Tigers. 
Well, you know that Wheeler will attack uh, on the offensive end. Left-handed, uh, he goes either side, left or right, but he will explode and try to get to the paint. And if he can, and find his shooters, but I think he'll go at Cooper. Good matchup between the two lead guys. The matchup zone out front again. Georgia's got good shooters with their confidence and feeling good about their game. They can get into a little bit of a funk on the offensive end. It looked like a clean strip from Ty Fagan said it's his first foul. Georgia off to a great start. Four of seven from the floor, and the dogs trying to even the season series have a 10-4 lead early. Chilly here lately. <laughs> what, what? Okay, so what's chilly? Uh, I said 43, you know, and I'm thinking it's warm. Upper 40s. No, that's a, we would, <laughs> I would I would take 43 all day today. Here's Jamal Johnson at the free throw line, transfer from Memphis. We had to talk with Bruce Pearl today. He's got Johnson in the starting lineup now for the last nine games. What? What else can he expect out of Johnson in terms of production? He was scoreless last time out. Well, they want him to get his confidence going with his jump shot. That's what he's known for. And what Bruce told us today is he's got to get away from doing the things he's not really good at, right? Putting it on the floor, trying to do some crazy things around the rim. Spot up, take your shot, be confident with it because they need that outside shot because it opens everything up for guys like Cooper that could just run the show. Wheeler, the top assist man in the league. Whips it to the right. Here's Kamara who takes a bump and <laughs> shot ended up over the backboard. That'll be a foul on Dylan Cardwell. So how do these guys differ? What happens when they make things happen? Well, of Sharif Cooper's assist distribution, 39% of them end up in dunks. On the other side, Wheeler's 56% of them end up in Two-point shots. Georgia not a great three-point shooting team. Kamara got can the you, first of two. Tom, can you recall any guard like Cooper that throws as many lobs from different angles? Uh, either hand going direction. I mean, you won't think he'll throw a lob, and the next thing you know, he's got to go into the rim. His teammates obviously trust him. Bruce Pearl's got a lot of action away from the ball, so guys are cutting to the rim. But he will put a lob up from any angle for the watch. Gonna be a foul on Georgia on the Devin. Well, oh, take that back. It is on uh, Tamani Kamar. That's his first on the Devin Cambridge drive. And Cambridge will be shooting a couple. Just 53% from the line, he rattles the first one home. You know, another guy that can be explosive. Cambridge now in his sophomore season. I think back that freshman year, he had 26. For the game against South Carolina, he had 21. Seven threes, all three pointers in that game against LSU. So he is capable of having big, big nights. Fair to call him a streaky shooter. Yeah, fair. Uh, he hasn't had as many big streaks this season, but obviously he's capable. Uh, he's thrived now coming off the bench as the sixth man in the seven games since Cooper has been reinstated. His numbers are higher now that Cooper's back, shooting at a better percentage from the field than he was when Cooper wasn't in the lineup. Stolen away by Cambridge. Took the inbounds and almost jammed it home, but back rimmed it. Almost spectacular, great hands, great hustle. Easy break, he will finish that 99 out of the 100 times. Frustrating because you'd like to have the easy two points in your column, not only for your team, but for your individual stats. Yeah, get the bucket, right? Yeah. He's been shooting the ball a lot better as a starter. And we got clock issue. Bruce Pearl's going to take advantage of change the defense up or changing the basketball out. All right. Looks like that's what Ron Gruber tried to do on the other side under the standard, but didn't have one available. Here's Katie. Per 40 minutes played. Well, there's a hustle on both ends. One uh, to make the steal, the other to get back. 
in Georgia. Very confident tonight shooting the basketball. Three of four beyond the three-point line. Six of nine from the field. Here's one inside. And, you know, if they needed a good start, wanted a good start, they've got it. Another guy that can stretch out a defense, nearly 40% from three. He had five block shots in the win against Georgia in Athens. And when you watch uh, Auburn play, a lot of their shots aren't blocked on the guy they're guarding. They block from the weak side, help side defense. Come across very athletic. Gives a little bit of confidence to guards out front, but sometimes you can get lazy then too as a guard. If the guys behind you can clean up your mess. Stolen, throw, throw right to Jamal Johnson. His share results in a blocking foul on Georgia. And that'll be the first on Justin Kyer. Each member of Georgia's backcourt, starting backcourt, has a personal foul here early in this one. It'll put Allen Flanagan at the free throw line. Not shooting the ball particularly well over the last couple of games. Just six for his last 22 from the floor. And it spins out. Yeah, did not play well, did not shoot well in the Baylor loss. One of six from beyond the three-point line. Three of 14 from the field. He's had a terrific sophomore campaign, though. His average is up to 14 points a ball game. After just three points a game as a freshman. That's going to go against Auburn's Dylan Carter. His second off the feed from KD Johnson. KD Johnson certainly brings another. His second off the feed from KD Johnson. KD Johnson certainly brings another dimension to this Georgia offense. He was late getting on the floor, similar to what Sharif Cooper went through. The big difference is Johnson was able to be with the team and around the team. There was a period of 72 days. Or Sharif Cooper wasn't allowed to practice with the team or work out with the team. How about the good part that Bruce Pearl talked about on that, Tom, was how much Cooper, when the team was coming off the practice floor, then Sharif Cooper would show up so teammates could see him. He was in the weight room when the team wasn't in the weight room. They saw him working out, getting ready, and they were just hopeful. A night before the Alabama game, that would have been January 8th. Bruce said, I found out Friday night he was going to be eligible, and I decided, well, we're going to start him. <laughs> <laughs> Why waste any time? And that was a game against Alabama that was decided in the 90s. Here's Thor. And what a difference. And get Cooper on the bench right now, but what a difference he's made to this Auburn offensive attack all the way through. Now, this is the biggest question. is What is Auburn when Cooper is not on the floor? Obviously, they're not the same team. Their numbers show it. We showed that earlier. But even in games when he comes out during the game, they will lose a little bit of advantage for easy baskets. That's what he causes. Thor running the floor. Had to kick up his shins. Not a great feat to him. Georgia numbers the other way. Rejected oh, wow. out the basket. Devin Cambridge turned that one around. And then a strip by Cambridge. Numbers for the Tigers. And as game how many miss, goes, sometimes the numbers don't matter. Yeah, how many missed opportunities has Auburn had on one end and result in a bucket for Georgia on the other? Andrew Garcia able to put that one in. See, with Cooper out, Flanagan takes over most of the point guard. Duty 6'6, 215, not a natural point. And he's got to use his uh, the size to his advantage if he can, even from the speed guard position. Andrew Garcia back to back buckets. The struggles for Auburn inside are real, and it's a real departure from who they are on this season. 1.2 points per possession around the basket on 61% shooting. 
That's not happening tonight. One six of the last seven. It's an interesting matchup, John, because they, they share the border, obviously, and they share fertile recruiting ground in that Bruce Pearl has really made a name for his program recruiting the Atlanta area. And you could dial it down to McEachern High School if you wanted to, but it's really a little bit wider than that, which, of course, is in Georgia's backyard as well. Yeah, and it's, uh, when you, you say McEachern, and you start thinking of uh, Isaac Okora and the whole group that's there this year, that, that you know, the questions always come up uh, to the Georgia staff. Could you have gotten Cooper? Could you have gotten Okora? And, and that happens when other teams come in your state. But to Bruce Pearl, Auburn is extremely close and probably closer to McEachern High School than uh, Athens, Georgia is. Great article by Chip Towers in the Atlanta Journal Constitution about that and about how these kids got to Auburn and how Cooper they all love playing with each other back in high school and AAU ball their AAU coach was Amar Cooper Sharif's dad who's now opened his own agency Sharif's sister Taya played her college ball at Baylor and she's not playing in the WNBA Averaging 21 good points idea. and 8 assists a game. Probably a good idea to have your own agency, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, hanging with Mr. Cooper was a pretty good show back in the day. And if you can <laughs> hang with your kids, there's some money to be made, especially as you saw the ESPN ranking. Sharif projected the ninth overall pick in this summer's NBA draft. Katie Johnson trying to shake. He's an Atlanta native. Gets down the lane. And gets it in for his second bucket of the game. Georgia's got about a 10-point lead. And the thing about KD Johnson, he's explosive, shoots the ball well outside. Tom Creed said he's so competitive. Did not play well in the Ole Miss win on Saturday. He only took two field goal attempts. He had five points, his lowest output. First time he hasn't been in double figures this season. Pretty jumper for Jamal Johnson. Good sign. Shooter knocks one down. It looked easy. Looked smooth. Son of former Bama, Bama star Buck Johnson. How's that for Thanksgiving meal when your dad's an Alabama grad? <laughs> and all comes in as an Auburn grad. A heave and a miss on an empty possession. Rebounded by Thor. Here's Cooper. Open floor. Took it down with him. Thor follows it up, picks up the trash, and takes it home. So when Cooper goes to the rim, not just one, two, three Georgia Bulldogs trying to defend him. So if you're a teammate, you just keep running the floor. There's going to be opportunities when you play with such a great lead guard out front that can get buckets for himself or for you if you're, if you're finding the open spots. Six of Auburn's 19 have come on the offensive rebounds. And a Georgia turnover. Auburn's starting to put it together here. They're down 10 a moment ago. JT Thor, like his namesake. Uh, Lock had four threes, and, and they did. I, I'm not sure anybody picked Florida to win. Um, I thought there was a couple disappointing losses. LSU, you had the LSU game. They gave yeah. that away in the last, they didn't give it away, but the last minute should have won that game. They gave it away. Yeah, you get out I was disappointed in the I, last 59 seconds. I was disappointed in Alabama a little bit. The start of Alabama, uh, it, it it appeared as though they walked in as though they're a top 10 team and they would handle business. But you know, Oklahoma kind of punched them a little bit early and rebounded well. But uh, I thought it was it was, a, it was a good weekend, and I think it's great for the league in both leagues to step out for one game, get away from the family as as Mike Anderson always used to call it, get away from the family, go get some good competition, see how you stack up. And obviously the SEC came away with a 5-4 win. Wheeler 0 for 3 to start this game, going head-to-head -head with Sharif Cooper. Cambridge going down the lane. They will count it. They have a chance for a three-point play. So many times right now, Georgia in their man-to-man -man defense, they have to stay with Thor because he's capable of shooting it. But that opens up some driving angles. And we already talked about Cambridge before. He can be streaky, but he's athletic. 
can play above the rim, can shoot it from deep. But if he's cutting, uh, he much, and, and the cuts are hard, much harder to defend. And that time Thor put the pass right on the book. That was a second personal on Justin Pike. Tom Crean is not afraid to play his guys with two fouls. In the first half, he actually stands out. It's 55th highest two foul participation in the country, Tom Crean. At 38%, meaning he plays his guys 38% of the remaining minutes. Nice push ahead. And a beautiful finish on the run by P.J. Horn, the Virginia Tech transfer. Well, bad turnover by Cooper. I think he got lazy, but good hands defensively. They doubled him up on the wing. Tom Crean told us this afternoon that they're going to change defenses. Not so much it has to be zone or man. But they might show Cooper double team. They might single cover. Might be a taller guy on him, shorter guy. They don't want Cooper to dictate the pace. And when he, he took it to the wing, all of a sudden there's the double team. Hands got active. They knocked it away. Got a bucket on the other end. So Tom Creed's not going through what they did the first game when they met Cooper. And Cooper had a monster night with 28 points and 12 assists. He's had a couple games with 12 assists. So that tells you a little bit about what he can do leading this team. And this is where he's really earned his scholarship. He set a school record against Missouri. He went 18 of 21 from the free throw line. He draws 9.1 fouls per 40 minutes played. That is an astonishing number. It would be the second most in the country if he had enough to qualify for the stat services, including Ken Pomp. But that rate is out of his world. And he's on the floor to dive and tie that one up. And he's not leaving without the basketball. Yeah. Meanwhile, we get a women's basketball doubleheader. 25th ranked Georgia will be on the road against Alabama Thursday night at 7, followed by Texas A&M, top 10 team at home against LSU at 9 o'clock. Both games right here on the SEC Network and on the ESPN app. They double Cooper. Almost gave it away. Jackson Etter getting some run on Sharif Cooper here in the first half. And with the foul. Auburn in the bonus. So what do you think Tom thing Green's is. thinking is with, with Jackson Etter on the floor here in the first half? Well, just another body, right? He's only played 36 yeah. minutes this season. And so there's another body. Wear down Cooper a little bit. Put a little pressure on him. They double teamed him. He nearly threw it, threw it away. But now give Cooper credit. Once he got the ball back, he took a look. Okay, number 11, I probably don't know him as well as I should. Wasn't on my scouting report, but I'm going to take him, see if he can make a play. True contact goes back to the free throw line, where you said he makes a living. Ten free throw attempts a game. I mean, this kid, he had, what did he shoot, 20 free throws, 21 free throws against Missouri. Made 18 of them. Okay, like we said earlier, Tom Crean told us we're going to change the looks just so Cooper does not get comfortable. Wheeler into the paint. Has that one rejected? Another block from Auburn. That's Javon Franklin with the block. Cooper shooting just 19% from deep. I'm interested on how they'll defend him outside the arc. You'd probably give him space, wouldn't you? Sure. Dare him to make a shot or two. Instead, when you get up this close, that's what he does. He goes by you. He either goes by you or gets into you to get those trips yeah. of fouling, which is also a skill. We got a foul on a push from Chris Moore. And much like what Wheeler, much like what Wheeler wants to do is get into you. And he gets to the lane and the weak side help from Franklin. This is where Auburn is so athletic and so gifted around the rim. That when you come to the lane, there's got to be enough spacing, enough avenues to see, uh, uh, you know, your guys to get open. Good ball fake. Good layup. Edder saw two guys fly right by. Auburn blocks 15% of the two-point attempts from the opposition. 
It's one of the highest rates in the country. They lead the SEC in blocks. He came in with 110. A lot of standing. Sometimes it can look like a zone. If you, if, if you don't cut and don't move, anything looks like a zone. I'm surprised they won a violation, but regardless of miss, and Georgia comes down with a four-point lead, four to go in the half. Samani Kamara, three ball, and Georgia extends that lead. This is a confident shooting Georgia team tonight. Kamara only 22% beyond the three-point line, but had, did not hesitate to spot up and take it. Six different Bulldogs hit a three in the win against Ole Miss over the weekend. Shot clock winding down again. It's now at three. Screen for Cooper. It's at one. He gave it up late. They got it off with the buzzer ringing. And it goes. And we'll have players, including more freshmen from West Memphis, Arkansas. Josh Vitale, fantastic beat writer for the Auburn Tigers. Dug up this stat, Sonny. The team has scored on 100% of Moore's possessions when he's on the floor of the last four games. You know, if I'm Chris Moore, <laughs> I saddle up next to Bruce Pearl and go, hey, we don't miss when I'm playing. We need some time. Tomorrow, you know, it's interesting. Hey, Tom, what, I, I, one of the best lines I've ever heard was the fact when they talked about Chris Moore, he, he, he played inside as a high school player. And he's quick enough now to guard guards, and he's powerful enough to play inside. He's only 6'6". Six, six. And they call him a tweeter. And Bruce Pearl, who said he's a tweeter, and most guys, you kind of hesitate on tweeter. Can't play this position or that position. Bruce Pearl said tweeters can be a matchup nightmare. So what that does is gives that kid confidence in whatever, he, whether he's playing guard, whether he's playing inside, of what he can do when he gets in the game. And I've never really heard coaches say it like that, but he said, hey, my, that kid's a nightmare for somebody, which is terrific. And it certainly makes sense. Flanagan with the foul. That's his first. Fourth team foul on Auburn here with under three minutes to go in the half. Georgia shooting 48% from the floor. Auburn only 38%. An abysmal thought, first half for the Tigers. I thought Kyer would take that open three. He's only taken one shot tonight. He hit the three. He's played 12 minutes, but only one shot. Normally, Kyer, if he's going to get an open look, he's going to take it. This is the lineup that uh, worries Bruce Pearl the most. Wheeler, Katie Johnson, Kyer. All with the ability to score. From point blank range. Kyer's got five. Six different Georgia Bulldogs averaged 9.9 .9 points or better. It's a very balanced attack. Cooper with the blow by, then a foul. Looks like it's going to be on the floor on P.J. Hall. Another different defender that time, K.D. Johnson. Now, here's the mistake. Johnson goes out. He's a physical player. Big, strong, solid. He gets too close to Cooper. And now Cooper's all at his advantage. He's going to blow, blow by you and then control if he can get his body into your body. So you can't square him up at half court. He, he's going by and he's going to make it a mismatch. Correction, that was K.D. Johnson on the foul, not Horn. Johnson pull up. Cooper is in there trying to rebound. Now Severe Wheeler for three. He had two threes in the win against Ole Miss for guys shooting just 27% from deep on the year. Fourth offensive rebound for this Georgia squad. It was one of the worries of Bruce Pearl coming into this one. Georgia is down 36% of their misses, 11th best in the country. Jalen Williams has another bucket. Auburn by eight, uh, trailing by eight. It, it was uh, 
when Georgia played this past weekend against Ole Miss, they couldn't keep Ole Miss off the offensive glass. Ole Miss had 26 offensive rebounds. Problem was, Rebels couldn't put it back in the bucket. Wheeler, mismatch on Thor, will go into him. The left it short. And it kicks out of bounds off of P.J. Horn. In long shots, uh, tough rebounds, and Cooper looked like he had it. But the strength and the toughness of Andrew Garcia, the grad transfer from Stony Brook, got his teammate an open look and an easy look. Rebound ripped down by Kyer. Under a minute to go in the half. Georgia trying to add to it, but it's stolen away by Jamal Johnson. He lobbed it up the floor to Flanagan. Okay, good play by Flanagan. I'm not sure many of the guys saw the pass coming. Wasn't a good pass. Flanagan saved it, saved the possession. Well, here's where Tom Crean's uh, coaching trustworthiness comes back to bite him. Justin Kyer picks up his third. I, I mentioned earlier that Crean will play his guys with two fouls in the first half. I mean, now one of his starters is going to have to deal with foul trouble in the second half, picking that one up with 35 seconds left. Jamal Johnson, 70% on the season from the line. There's another one coming. And Kyer will uh, sit out the final 35 seconds. Kyer was the one that made the bad pass for the turnover to go the other way. He made a deep pass to the right when he had an open guy to his left. Nearly a five-second difference in the game clock and shot clock. Samir Wheeler looking back at Tom Green. What do you want? Matched up with Jamal Johnson. See when they go a high screen. Going to take a timeout. Looking, I thought maybe they'd have a high pick coming up. Well, it's interesting to wait so late to use the timeout. I suppose you're not going to go. They shoot it well from deep. In a game earlier this season, they made 22 threes at home. Would have been an SEC record. Except Alabama it hit 23 against LSU. Wheeler with five now. Looking for a low by. Got it. High off the glass. Four seconds left. They turn it over. And an all-Georgia first-half dog shoot an even 50% from the floor, 16 of 32. And in a matchup with a point guard, Sabir Wheeler with five. And Shreve Cooper. Georgia was just better. More energy. Eight players scored, 13 points off the bench, 22 points in the paint. They were more aggressive. They attacked better. And I'm sure Bruce Pearl wasn't happy at halftime. Trying to get his guys to defend their home court for this Georgia team. Um, I think they defended Cooper well How can they maintain their ability to make shots good pass there? Kamara fouled by Akinbola who's starting the second half for Auburn And that'll put Tumani Kamara at the free throw line Sharif Cooper drew four fouls in the first half That's about his average it was interesting talking to Tom Green about Cooper's ability to get to the free throw line as Kamara knocks down the first. He said he's the best seller since Cody Zeller. <laughs> and Cody, of course, played for Tom at Indiana. Said so Cody Zeller was so good at selling fouls that we as a team led the nation in free throw attempts two years in a row. He could let out a yell, he could slap the floor, whatever necessary. To get the reps' attention and get those whistles. Tomorrow, As Tom Creed said, that can be that can be frustrating to an opponent. But I think the compliment there to Cooper was the fact that he understands the difference of what referees and how they're calling the game. Those that are going to blow the whistle often, if you're a good player, take it into bodies. Try to get contact. Try to get that whistle. Wow, straight downhill. Nobody picked up Wheeler. Open three for P.J. Horn. Jamal Over Johnson. Defense. Go ahead. Yeah, Jamal Johnson squared up Wheeler at half court, and then there was a high pick. He just went right through the defense. Cooper with the answer. 
It has been the largest Georgia lead at 12. Auburn's defense not factor in the first half. That's continuing in the second half. Consider this. Georgia scored 1.14 points per possession in the first half. Anything over one in the college game is pretty good. Cooper buries the three. We're just trading buckets. Yeah, this could uh, this could get fun. Last time down, Ty Fagan, who only had two points in the first matchup, and has played well except for that game, but he had a tip in for his ninth point. This could get fun. Cooper heats up. Georgia heats up. The pace gets going. Wheeler, this is what he does. There's three white jerseys around him. Finds a teammate. Easy three. Now, here's what you'll dare this guy to do, right? Hands are down to his side. They're just going to say, Fagan's just going to try to give Cooper the shot to see if he'll take it. That's the next step for Cooper to be a great player or to expand his greatness. He is a great player. Horn gives it up. No word on the stoppage of play a moment ago. Here's Sevier Wheeler from deep. And we got a foul inside. Apparently, it was Bruce Pearl being out of the coach's box that drew a warning from Ron Groover a moment ago. And now an Auburn foul goes against Alan Flanagan. It's his second. Five offensive That'll rebounds in the first goal. half. Yeah, five offensive rebounds. Sorry about that, Tom. The first half. Now, they've already had two in the second half. Better energy from this Bulldog team, and you would expect Auburn at some point to shore it up a little bit defensively. In the win in Athens in the second half, they made a 22-3 run that just kind of blew that game wide open. Hockey change for Bruce Pearl. He's going to get Chris Moore into the game, among others. Flanagan will take a seat with his second. Another one coming for Fagan. He's really been shooting the ball well lately. 71% over his previous four games. One or two from the line. You mentioned this game could get fun if it gets going up and down and guys start hitting shots. To whose advantage would that be? Well, it's usually the whole court advantage. Uh, that's the pace they want to play, and Georgia wants to play that. But when you're on the road, now again, everything's different during COVID, right? No big crowds, no jungle, no anything at Auburn Arena. But a home team that's up and down, space it out, usually their advantage. Wow. Cooper able to get inside. I might have said he was lackluster in the first half, but this second half so far, He's on top of things. Going off the dribble, he's knocked in a three. He made a layup, and now watch the explosion. Dances, that time it's an assist. So the word has it from the coaches. We need you to pick up the pace. So far, so good. 25, 25, here we go. That was the first personal on Cooper, who scores or assists on 47% of Auburn's buckets. Fagan into the paint. Good ball fake. He's got a dozen. You know, Fagan did that in both Ole Miss wins. He attacked their 1-3-1. One, one. He could get it in the paint and could finish. And Auburn shooting him well to start this second half. Chris Moore only got a two on his long jump in the first half. That one definitely a three. Now the rebound by Jamal Johnson. Tom, the other part, if Cooper plays a bit faster, it doesn't allow the Bulldogs to set up or change defenses. If he can attack right away. He's one of two from the line. We've got a foul on the rebound with Akingbola losing his balance. Apparently, he had some help in going down. And that'll be P.J. Horn. George's lead was as high as 12 here in the second half in the early going. Now down to five. <laughs> Little jumper in the lane for Jalen Williams. Well, great call, great play from underneath out of bounds. Got a wide open jump shot, good screen. Need another easy bucket. Boy, they've got easy attempts all night long. Taken away by Wheeler. Got a half step on Cooper, who's overplaying his left addition. The dunk, Kamara pays it off. Four buckets this half alone. Uncontested. <laughs> uh, 
this half is a lot more fun than the first half, John. <laughs> That's what we want to see, what we expected to see. How quickly Auburn can score with a made basket or a miss, they can push it. Georgia can do the same, doesn't do it as regularly on the road. Combined 13 of 17 since the intermission. Fagan having a great game, and he's able to get by Cooper. Super tried to sell it. Fagan. Refs did not buy it. Wide open three for Jalen Williams. Four for five in the second half beyond the three point line, this Auburn team. They're trading two for three. Another drive. Oh, the putback will count. It'll be goaltending on Dylan Caldwell. Two for three is not a great exchange rate. Afternoon in Oxford when he was nine for nine from the field. And tonight, he has played well. Strong around the rim. Seven and nine from the field. Five, five rebounds also. Half of Auburn's attempts here in the second half have come from behind the arc. They've knocked down four of five from deep. Downhill Cambridge. Georgia playing some defense. Ty Fagan finds it, gives it up. Here's Cooper now open floor. The lob, and it's stolen by Kamara. That was on the scouting report from head coach Tom Crean. He said he loves to throw lobs from the left side of the floor to the right, and Tamani Kamara was waiting on it. Yeah, he waited on it. I think he didn't throw it high enough. He's got great athletes, and Cooper knows that. you got to get the ball up in the air, and Kamara would not have had a chance. But good defensive play by Kamara. Couldn't uh, keep the possession. Hey, got a push off from Chris Moore. That's what got him so open. It's his second personal. You could hear him screaming. He had Wheeler down low in the old days. They'd say I got a mouse in the house and Moore kept screaming. He was open Gave Wheeler a little push Unfortunately right in front of the official VP knows how to work the officials. Rod Grover's on the other side of the floor and walking away So he gave up on him. He went to the official nearest him Pardon me, that was a three-second call not a foul on more so that's helpful but an empty possession nonetheless and then a foul puts katie johnson on the floor they around the rim they've had open looks as well as auburn is scoring the basketball there they have not been able to get a run like they normally get especially in this building they've not been able to do it because george has been so efficient on the offensive end Here's Wheeler, and we got a hook by Cooper, and that'll be his second personal. But what a play by Garcia. He sets the screen on Cooper. Cooper's guard Wheeler. They switch it. Now Wheeler has to guard, I mean, now Cooper has to guard Garcia. Wheeler recognizes it right away and pounds it in Andrew Garcia, the grad transfer from Stony Brook. 6'6", six, six, tough kid, 225. Smart decision to who to scream with and smart play by Wheeler to recognize that Cooper the smaller player couldn't handle Garcia inside The grad transfer Bergenfield, New Jersey goes one or two from the free throw line They let Flanagan handle it with Cooper on the bench for a moment and now it's tough for Auburn Cooper on the sideline yeah, tougher for Auburn to get into sets with Flanagan out front. Not as easy, not as easy, not as natural. Beautiful look, but Thor wasn't ready. Kamara has it rejected. Good close by Jalen Williams. Tom, you know who's been quiet is JT Thor. Yeah. Not had many looks. He's played so well in SEC play. He's been kind of the guy that's been able to stretch defense. He hasn't been involved at all. Another layup by this Bulldog team. 
Georgia able to extend that lead again. That's Sabir Wheeler with his offhand. Now they're up by eight. 34 of Georgia's 60 have come in the paint. Here's Jalen Williams. Offensive board for Auburn. And they get one to go. Williams says 14 tonight. Can Georgia continue on the offensive end to have great half court possessions? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Where's the defense? I mean, from all the way to half court, just all to the lane, high off the glass. Tough shot, tough make. Remember Cooper on the bench right now for Auburn. Shot clock at 10. Barely drew rim. On the run, Katie Johnson draws the foul. That is the third on more that lost possession a few minutes ago was indeed a personal foul on Moore. So now he's got three. And the field goal percentage goes up significantly as well. Here's Katie Johnson at the free throw line. But it seems like right now Auburn's problem is stopping the ball getting down the lane Yeah, think of their shooting percentage George's 9 of 14 from the field and Alabama or, uh, Auburn is shooting it great themselves 10 of 15 But the difference in the quality of shots The layups around the rim for this Bulldog team how aggressive they are at attacking and how um, Undefensive right is is Auburn not stopping the ball, not stopping anybody at the rim. TV time. Good looking Pashmina, and as always, fashionable mask. <laughs> if you had Pashmina on your bingo card, go ahead and check it off. They gave it back to Auburn, huh? How'd they do that? I don't did you know. see something I did not see or did the whistle blow before the pass was made? Now they're claiming it was an inadvertent whistle Akimbolo commits the foul. That's his second Okay, Tom, let's get back to up and down basketball. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I think Bruce said good call. I could see that one. <laughs> oh Goodness Cooper gambled for the steal, and he thought his teammate was going to get it. Cambridge couldn't win the race. Coming back the other way, Horn transition. Got it! Wow, wow big time three by P.J. Horn. And George has opened up a 13-point lead. Ball looked like it was going the other way, and I mean, it just looks like this is a turtle. Goes back the other way. And P.J. Horn, who can stroke it from outside, especially when his confidence gets going, has struggled lately from the three ball. First three games in the SEC, he was over 40%. Last six, he's been under 25%. Here's Thor. And the rebound ends up in the hands of K.D. Johnson. It's a 13-point Georgia lead. Johnson has it blocked, followed up by Andrew Garcia. And then a travel, and Georgia gets it back, and the Bulldogs have a stranglehold on the momentum in this one. Tom, I had Georgia against Ole Miss on Saturday, and one of the things they did not do was block out. They've been much more aggressive on both sides of the floor at chasing the ball to the rim and blocking out because Auburn's been more aggressive this half trying to attack and get offensive rebounds. You mentioned the fact that that was a big run for Auburn in the first matchup. They need another one of those. A double dribble turns it over. 
I'll tell you, as a player, Garcia wants that one back. He made such a good move, but he lost the handle of the basketball. So that's a double dribble. This Georgia team right now, Tom, has all the confidence going on their side. And, and how does Auburn change momentum, right? Is it just by Cooper? Can't be by one guy. Tom Crean, remember, told us we're going to change defenses. I'm going to put fresh guys on Cooper. We're going to mix it up. We're going to double him sometimes. And so far, it's worked tonight. Johnson was wide open. Johnson was 0 for 11 over his last couple of games. He's got eight points in this one. One three one half court defense and Georgia was highly successful against one of the better one three one defensive teams in Ole Miss. Deficits twelve. Cooper. by Johnson back up and in well he's had a good game solid we talked earlier in the first half about how he has struggled scoring the basketball and shooting but thank goodness for Auburn tonight Johnson got the last couple buckets one of three and then the two he's got ten points in this ball game no whistle on the drive another block for Auburn another chance for Georgia Loose ball and it pinballs out of bounds and will be Georgia basketball. SEC play, Tom Hart. Aggressiveness, Georgia. Pouncia, who's been one of the toughest on the floor tonight. And the reaction from the Georgia sideline. They have come into Auburn Arena in Auburn, Alabama, trying to get a win. Great pass. Got a point blank look, but couldn't finish. And then a foul on the loose ball again. It may not look difficult, folks, but the, one of the hardest passes when you're taking it out of bounds is to trust that your guy's going to be in a position. And Wheeler trusts. He'll make a bounce pass into a crowd from underneath out of bounds that might not look like it's going to get there. He made one of the great passes all season long against Kentucky when nothing was there. He made the pass. P.J. Horn trusted it, laid it in to beat the Wildcats. There's a held ball on one side, and then Kyer commits his fourth on the other. And that basket that you're talking about gave Georgia their first win against Kentucky in their last 14 tries. We talked to Tom Crean about that confidence. He said, guys still need to learn that the other team can make mistakes, too. These are long games. You have to learn how long the game is. And it sounds very elementary, but his point being that you're still in a game, even if you're down. And, oh, by the way, you haven't won a game just because you're up. And that lesson... Might be the key one here tonight. And it doesn't just have to be on the offensive end. Tom made it sound as though he's got guys that sometimes get down if they're not shooting the ball well. But there's nothing wrong, especially conference play. You're going to have a lot of grind out games. And who can grind each other better and who can hang in to an end of a ball game? Cooper gets the front of the left hand. Wheeler slides by him and gets it. Man, it was great defense until it wasn't. He stayed with it, but Wheeler, smart, crafty, head up, eyes up, good step through. Auburn had been on a 7-0 run before that Georgia was on a 14-2 run. So Starks goes out. Edder now comes back in. Remember, he played the first half, hasn't played much this year. Another fresh body on Cooper defensively. Edder had his foot on the baseline. It'll be Auburn basketball with 7.22 to go. Sabi Wheeler is just a sophomore, but he looks like the wily veteran. Nothing bad to the back, and some of us old men, when we get those back spasms, you, it's pretty hard to run back out of the court play, but he looks like he's fine. Auburn basketball after Edder stepped down the end line. Cooper guarded by Edder. 
Flanagan on the drive. And he's been able to get it on Horn, which is his second. Well, frustration by Flanagan on that one because he got his big body into the defender and had a point-blank shot, had already drawn the contact, had the whistle, and didn't finish the play. And as a score, that's a frustrating moment. Another one coming for Flanagan. Four-star recruit was the number one recruit in the state of Arkansas, according to ESPN, the 5A Gatorade Player of the Year a couple years ago. Two big free throws. This entire game, Fagan off the mark. Rebound ends up in Cooper's hands off of the touch from Cardwell. Cooper pushes. Flanagan. Offensive foul. You can hear it from the bench. Take a charge. Jackson Edder is nothing. If he's not coachable, he did just that. Super play defensively. Bad play offensively on both ends. Bad shot by Fagan. It allows the home team Auburn to get down. And here's the mistake. Flanagan's got a wide open Cooper standing in front of him. And if you got if you get over aggressive, you got two defenders on you. Etter, great positioning. Solid minutes off the bench tonight. Mostly defensive role. That was a near steal by Jamal Johnson. Auburn putting a full court press on. Jamal got his hands on it in the corner. A severe, a severe wheeler say, I'll take it out of bounds here if it's okay, Mr. Group. No, I got to go over there. <laughs> kind of an awkward spot. Georgia is a tough team to press, and the reason is they've got good ball handlers, and one of the better ones would be Wheeler, who should be in his hands because guys have a hard time with his quickness. And smaller guards dribble the ball lower to the floor, doesn't come up as high. Rarely turn it over. Shot clock of five. Johnson guarded by Cooper. Shot clock of one. Off the heel and a rebound to Jamal Johnson. Here's Auburn to push now. On the run out. A bucket for Flanagan avoiding the contact. He's got eight. Six point game. Boy, how athletic. Explosive. Smart to be able to jump kind of sideways by the defender. The softer defense, the zone defense, 1-3-1 one, one, has caused Georgia problems. It shouldn't. Like I said, they handled against Ole Miss. Got a point blank look and then a better Ooh. one. Horn jams it home. Tom Crean has always said against that kind of defense, he just needs to get it in the floor, get it on the let the defense get on the back side of you. Then they attack. Jalen Williams a little anxious there. Every time Auburn has whittled the lead away, Georgia's had an answer. Nobody picks up Katie Johnson. And Tom Georgia more successful at still being aggressive versus running clock. Auburn has not gotten back. They've not protected the rim. When Georgia walks it up and settles to run something against the defense, it's been tougher to get a shot. But again, if they pound it and tack the rim, they have had a lot of success. They are top 30 in the country in quickest time of possession. 15.6 seconds. Great pass. Wheeler. Oh, he missed the layup. He blew by everybody. Snuck behind Jamal Johnson. Cooper. And a reach-in foul. And Andrew Garcia will stop the clock with 435. Well, nothing will frustrate a coach more than a guy taking it all the way up the court. Like a layup drill and just laying it in. No weak side help. No backside help. But we've seen a lot of that tonight. Georgia at 50% from the field. Flanagan cut off. Here's Johnson. Got it. 
Got a great stroke and his confidence is yeah, great stroke and his confidence is back. Changes Auburn offensively. Wheeler down the lane again. Tipped out of bounds. They say it's Auburn basketball with 413 to go. Savir Wheeler, whether the back is bothering him or not, is a question for postgame, but he's missed two within two feet. Yeah, the one was uh, uncontested. That was more difficult, the last one. Solid defense on Cooper so far. Again, Cooper with 13 points. Remember, he had seven of the first nine points that Auburn had in the second half. Hasn't scored since. Georgia basketball on the turnover by Flanagan. Cooper, 13 points and seven assists, but four turnovers. Auburn just can't close that gap. Down a touchdown late. Open, and then he missed a more difficult one. But, uh, yeah, Auburn's going to make a run. Can they defend? Can they rebound? 22 of Georgia's 36 this half have come in the paint. Full court pressure for Auburn. Wheeler gets it into Kamara. And now they'll drop off. Valuable position to have a guy that can make the right pass from out of bounds, whether it's underneath, whether it's full court, whether it's on the sideline. I've seen guys make teams in the NBA only because they can take it out properly. Teddy Johnson couldn't make it. Did Scott Wegman do that for the Celtics? Well, Scott who? Just Scott Wegman. No, Scott Hastings did it a few times. He had a big career. Ed Neely, the great Kansas State player, used to be on the bench while then they, they say make the right pass whether he was in San Antonio or Chicago or Phoenix get it to the right guys an air ball from Johnson strange shooting it well and then you pull that one it's just ah a two of eight from should, deep tonight he should have every time you're a good shooter Tom you should scream when the ball's way off because an official said, well, he wouldn't miss it that much. Great shoot. Hey. Mars got a Baker's dozen. Cooper. Oh, almost threw it away. A gather and a foul. And a chance for a three-point play for Jalen Williams. So we know Cooper likes the lobs. And he finds angles. This one. Now, here's a good ball fake. Go up, draw contact, make the two. But uh, again, Auburn can't just keep trading buckets. They gave up a layup on one end. Now, if you make the free throw, you get a three point play. Here's the pressure again six point game. Wheeler running the baseline. Kamara, again, his favorite receiver. Near steal. That's off of Flanagan. It will stay with Georgia. Six seconds to get it across the timeline. You know, there's confidence in this Bulldog squad. They don't look for Wheeler to get it back once he inbounds it. So they're confident at bringing it. Kamara that time at 6'8", just turned the corner. Good pass. Okay. Wow. Johnson pass. all alone. Black from behind. The foul will be on Flanagan, his fourth. And Katie Johnson... A little woozy. Tom, I can't tell you how good we saw SEC teams struggle with leads late over the course of the weekend. LSU was outscored 12 0 in the final minute. Oklahoma outscored Alabama, but scored seven of the last eight in that game. Katie Johnson is a 60% free throw shooter. Two of three tonight. Those one of two. Deficit seven with 248. And expect Cooper to pick the pace up a bit, not to walk it up the floor. How about that? That might have been one of those plays that Tom Green was talking about, the cop to Cody Zeller. You saw the head go flying back after the contact with P.J. Horn. And it'll put Sharif Cooper to do a coach. Cooper knows how to draw contact, knows how to get the official to look his way. He's got the ball in his hands. But uh, honestly, Horn's got to be smarter than that. You don't necessarily need to stop Cooper. It worked that time. He misses the free throw. You don't have to stop him out that far from the rim. Correct. 
Two and a half to play. The lead seven. Wheeler guarded by Cooper. Almost got him. They switch out to Katie Johnson. Downhill. Kamara grabs the miss. Got it. What big play. Good for pass. Kamara. And credit Kamara who was staying with it. Flanagan, ball fake. Three ball. Pardon me, that's Cambridge after the ball fake. And we got a jump ball. Possession belongs to Georgia. Two minutes to go, six point game. Down the middle, KD Johnson. This is a terrific bounce pass. But maybe even a better play by Camaro to stay with it, not to get rid of it. Flanagan hears the pass. Watch Cambridge. Ball fake, get the defense to jump. And when they took the ball in bounds, Wheeler got stuck. Now, with Auburn trapping at different times, Georgia will be able to get through that. There'll be offensive opportunities on the other end. Cooper the foul, his third. Xavier Wheeler to the line. 70% on the season. First attempt tonight. Could hear, hear the net rip. He's got the first to two. As good a player and as good a scorer as he is, he should have that free throw percentage in the low 80s. As much as he has the ball in his hands and uh, games on the line. Couple of big ones from Wheeler. Here's Cooper, shows the ball and puts it in. He's got 15, quick timeout taken. Deficit's been whittled to six again. John Sunville, Shreve Cooper can do a lot. He can do a lot. He can take a look at uh, the guys we featured in the opening. Wheeler and Cooper, pretty even matchup tonight. Full court pressure by the Tigers. And Wheeler's got to use the timeout. That came quick. He had Thor right in front of him. Georgia hasn't had issues with the Auburn press thus far tonight. But the pressure getting dialed up a little bit with 142 right. They've got to make sure, I think, if they don't get a steal to shore it up on the defensive end, that Georgia gets a tough look and only one look. No offensive rebound. Into Horn. He gives it up to Kamara. And now they'll trap at midcourt. And they get a foul on Sharif Cooper, which is his fourth. <laughs> and so there's the trap. Cooper doesn't feel like he's touching him. It's hard to really tell that close. And again, George has got to go to the free throw line. Kyra is a 70% free throw shooter. That looks comfortable. Over three. He traveled and he never touched him. Kyra's got another one coming. Certainly looked like Cooper made contact with him a couple of times. First on a left arm. Kind of like a defensive back. Might have had the back of his jersey. One hand there. Good hand. Cooper playing with four job. fouls. Good job by Wheeler, making it difficult. Great defense. Eight-point lead, Kamara with the rebound. Wheeler pass midcourt. Certainly feels like Georgia's going to escape the Plains with a win. Timeout, Georgia, 106 left on the clock, and an eight-point difference. Tomorrow's national. Car, I mean, Mike while has this fit. out and just make him make free throws. You know, why not? Although 14 Again. seconds on the shot clock. And Wheeler Get taking the, the ball out. Oh, wow. True. Auburn basketball down eight. You know, the simplest of things sometimes aren't. It's going to be a simple handoff. Go get the basketball. 
Not a handoff. Tried to pitch it to him right off his knee. Auburn's alive. Here's Thor for three. Hadn't made a three all night. They'll get another chance. That's off the rim. Under a minute to go now. Another rebound by Kamar. He's got his fifth double-double all in SEC play. And then a foul on Devin Cambridge. Seemed a little anxious trying to get those threes up back to back. Yeah, I mean, you have openings to get to the rim, but uh, it's the way they're, you know, kids are built. Let's get in a hurry. Time is running out. Now you've got Kyer going to the free throw line. He made his last two. He's two for two for the ninth. Got to be very comfortable position. Very good shooter. He's another guy that shouldn't be sitting at 70% as a free throw shooter. The George Mason transfer was solid a couple years ago for George Mason. Sat out last year for due to a stress fracture in his right foot. Cooper got a bump, and it'll be a foul on the floor. One on one coming for Sharif Cooper after the eighth team foul on Georgia. Keep this free throw. If he misses, get the ball inbounds, keep moving the basketball, make Auburn chase, get fouled, go make free throws. Get on the bus, and it'll be a great ride home. But you never know, Tom, you just uh, did the LSU-Texas Tech game. That seemed to be over, too, and it wasn't. Yeah. Cooper knocks them both down. Difference is eight with 44 ticks left. Wheeler lobs it down the floor. He's been magnificent on the inbounds. Kyer down the lane. Lead back to 10. Yeah, what a pass by Wheeler and then Kyer. <laughs> he did. He, he looked at the rim. He played the rim. There's nobody there. Teams at Chase probably will be guarding the rim. Thor Ofer from deep, and we got a Georgia foul. We'll keep it with Auburn down 10. Well, what a great inbounds pass by Wheeler. Throws it over the top. Kyer, that's a lot of pressure, especially when you're on the road, uh, especially when you're playing against a team that's as athletic as Auburn, that can steal, can be active with their hands. But uh, this Georgia team was ready when they came in. They were more uh, energetic, that, especially that first half. And they have made the right plays down the stretch. They have been comfortable most of the second half with this lead. Cambridge knocks them both down. Eight-point game, 30 seconds. Auburn's going to have to foul. They do so. JT Thor will put P.J. Horn at the free throw line, and now Auburn's going to have to hope Georgia misses some free throws. Yeah, Horn uh, sits atop of this at 83% on this Georgia Bulldog team for the free throw line, but this will be his first one of the night. First one's always the hardest one just to get your bearings set. But the grad transfer from Virginia Tech is very solid. Comfortable. That was easy. And look at that sideline for this Bulldog squad. Georgia 16 of 19 from the free throw line as a team. And we're going to oh, foul. And Ty Fagan on the rebound. It's his second consecutive Georgia foul on a rebound. And Auburn will be yeah. shooting in the bonus. Not a smart play, and he knows the rim. So 27 Count. seconds left, and this will be Alan Tom, Lampkin kinda, at the free throw line. Kind of like a golf game. It's hard to get it to the clubhouse, right? No matter what your yeah. score is, you know, it's hard to get to the clubhouse. Lane violation on Severe Wheeler after the ball had been given up. Lagan knocks them both down. Wheeler dumps it into Johnson. Almost dribbled it away. Instead, he holds on to it. And then a reach and foul to stop the clock with 22 seconds left. Third on Cambridge. 
You know what Wheeler's really good at, Tom, is Wheeler makes a lot of bounce passes to get that ball inbounds. Easier pass to handle from teammates. KD Johnson split that seam and came up and finally got contact. But fans are there trying to make as much noise as possible. Katie Johnson's got another one coming his way. He's four or five from the line tonight. Came in at 60%. 20 seconds remaining. Cooper with his spin move. Got to push it up with the dribble. They need some threes. He'll go to the free throw line on the foul from Katie Johnson. Good defense because they made Cooper turn at least once. Tried to get him to turn twice. And then when Cooper turned the corner, you probably don't need to touch him, but at least they didn't let him foul or foul him and let him finish the play. KD trying to help the officials on how Cooper gets contact. Straight from the scouting report, I'm sure. Cooper's got 18 points. Seven of nine from the line. On the Georgia side, six and double figures for the second time this season. Pressure coming. Down seven. The 6'10 Thor on the ball. Wheeler again, perfect on the inbounds. Katie Johnson will take it. Miss the layup, 10 seconds left. Seven point deficit, gotta hurry. They'll take the two on the dunk by Flanagan. Five seconds remaining, five point game. Well, you didn't need it on the other end, but uh, the miss, the miss. Here's where Auburn has struggled. And it's not a struggle, it's a fact that you've got a guy like Wheeler taking it out. They've not been able to force him into making a turtle. You got Thor defending the ball out of bounds. That'll be it for Cooper. Three tenths of a second came off. At least efficient, but Sharif Cooper fouls out. Yeah, I thought he was better second half. First half, he wasn't as efficient. Wasn't into it as well as he should have been. When you're that level player, you've got to be ready from the tip. Katie Johnson's 21 point game against Auburn first time around was the third highest point total in a Georgia debut behind a guy by the name of Dominique Wilkins and Anthony Edwards. Those guys turn out Missed to be the ball. Good. Yeah, they were all right. And Georgia all right. dribbles it out tomorrow with the rebound. Wow, 91 86, huge win for Tom Crean and company. Impressive uh, from the tip, they were good. Defensively outstanding. Time to get you to Mississippi.